When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless my heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Amen. I want you to turn. The Bible to the book of Genesis. Take it back to the essence. All right. We'll go to the book of Genesis. Genesis means beginnings. We're going to go to my favorite chapter in the Bible. One of my favorite chapters. Genesis 3. Amen. 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 Genesis 3. I'm going to preach a very familiar story. Genesis 3. It's the first book in the Bible, it's chapter 3. When you have it, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Ah, y'all got that. <laughs> okay, so Genesis 3 reads as follows. The word of God says this, and I'm reading from the King James Version. The word of God says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, We shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, somebody say pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant, pleasant to, to the, the eyes. eyes. And the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the word of God says, and the eyes of them both were what? Open. Amen. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees in the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. I want to talk to you on the subject and sermon entitled, 
from Genesis to Revelation. From Genesis to Revelation. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. Right now, we desire a word from you. Disappoint us not. Open up the eyes of all who are in attendance. Open up the ears so that they may hear thy precious word. Open up the hearts so that the word can fall on good ground and sprout up with rivers of rejoicing. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, before I say amen. 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 Now, if you've ever watched the Ten Commandments, you get a little glimpse of what took place in the Garden of Eden. But I, I want your mind for a little bit. I want to I wanna share some things with you. I want you to understand something about the Garden of Eden that a lot of people don't know. I'm going to share some things about Adam and Eve uh, that is very relevant to who we are where we are, and what we are experiencing here today. Now, Adam and Eve, we know the story. We know that the word of God says that in the beginning, uh, the earth was without void. It was formless and without void. And, and the spirit of the living God uh, spoke and said that there be light, and light showed up. And then on the first day, he created this. And on the second day, he created that. On the third day, he did this. On the fourth day, he did that. And on the sixth day, he did that. And then on the seventh day, the word of God says that God rested on the Sabbath day. The seventh day, God rested after he created everything, and he said everything is good. I love this because the word of God, notice, he spoke everything else into existence, but he did something special when it came to creating man and woman. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, who could have spoke them into existence because we know that he spoke the sun into existence. We know that he spoke the land into existence. We know that as he spoke it, it came to pass. The transformative power of his word first transformed darkness to light. And then it transformed nothingness into somethingness because God is an awesome God of creation. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as he spoke it, it came to pass. And as he kept talking and kept walking, cracks popped up, fishes popped up, birds started flying, birds started chirping, whales started clapping up and down and sharks started moving and, and giraffes started uh, hopping and bunnies started hopping because God spoke it, it came to pass. But God said, let us, meaning him, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost say, let us make man in our image. Now let me tell you something and show you something that you've never seen inside of the Ten Commandments. When God bent down and he started to handcraft, the master started to handcraft his handiwork called man, he stooped down in the dirt because God is a God who can get down and dirty to bring forth something that's never been seen before, to make something out of nothing and create a masterpiece. God stooped down. And he started handcrafting man. And I could see him tracing it out. He did it better than Michelangelo, Picasso, and all of them. Because the word of God said he crafted them. It doesn't say that he had any waters. But he handcrafted them. He smoothed out his head. He smoothed out his eyes. He smoothed out his nose. He smoothed out his mouth. He started constructing something out of nothing. But he started constructing something that was made in his very own image. God is a powerful God. You thought something powerful was happening when he spoke the word. But once he started constructing man, he was starting to need something. <laughs> That would, as Muhammad Ali said, shake up the world. He handcrafted Adam. The Ten Commandments don't show you, but Adam was anywhere between 9 feet and 15 feet. So when God bent down 
and he started constructing Adam. We minus, we, we, we small, seven feet and all that stuff like that, a 15 point, a 15 foot person. Think about this. When you're driving on a highway, some of those signs is 12 or 13 feet high. That's how big Adam was. God started constructing him, but see, look, watch this. He didn't just place his hand on him. Notice at first, he spoke the word to create everything, right? Now watch this. He forms man with his very own hands. But then the word of God says, because Adam was still, he was just a sculpture of a person. 15 feet tall. But the word of God says, then God breathed the breath of life into him. And man became a living soul. So breath and body makes up a soul. You can't have a, you can't have a living soul without breath or a body. That's biblical. Now when breath leaves the body, the body no longer exists. Amen? Amen. We know that because or if, if it wasn't like that, then Adam, all he had to do was construct Adam and it would have been done. But the word of God says, and God breathed the breath of life into Adam and Adam became a living now notice this. Adam stands up, coming up out of the dust. Can you see him? Coming out of the dust. Now guess what? Adam wasn't white. I ain't never seen no white dust. In fact, if you look at the Bible, the Garden of Eden is in Africa. The Garden of Eden is in Africa. It tells you it was in Ethiopia, in between the Pisan River and, and the Euphrates. That's biblical. See, they try to tell you about a, a, a white baby face Jesus, but that ain't biblical. If the Garden of Eden is in Africa, if you trace back to all of the different civilizations, even China, the original man was a black man. Even in China, Look up their history. When I preach, I don't just preach and tell you what's going on. I want you to see everything from the spiritual aspect, from the history aspect, to the geographical aspect. I want you to see it all. The Garden of Eden was in the root of Africa. Why do you think that's where they came to come get us and enslave us? Because the devil was upset. Why do you think they came here to come enslave our people? Because in Africa, we were like gods. We were kings and queens, and a lot of people don't want us to know that. that if, if our young people knew that, they wouldn't be having their pants sagging down. If our young people knew that, they wouldn't be out there standing on line and pay all these money for, for sneakers. They'd be learning how to multiply their money and build an empire instead of making Nike rich, instead of making Gucci rich, instead of all that. If they only knew who they were. Now watch this. Adam comes forth from the dust, something out of nothing, and God says to Adam, I want you to name all the animals. Now get this, an elephant is huge, but notice this, every animal recognized the authority that was inside of Adam. Guess what? As big as an elephant was, an elephant looked like a dog to Adam. Uh. You ain't never heard of Genesis preached like this, right? Now watch this. I want you to understand this because it gets better, it gets bigger, and it gets deeper. When Adam starts naming, that's a dolphin, Lord. Lord, that's a shark. That's a whale. That's a monkey. That's an orangutan. That's a squirrel. That's a rabbit. When God was, when, when, when God had given him, he was walking in the authority of royalty. The same thing that God was doing to proclaim that, to create that, Adam was putting an imprint, a name on an animal. And they all showed him love, honor, and respect. Because he was made in the very image of God. And every one of you are created in the very image of God. Your authority of words has that kind of power. That's why we are created in the very image of God. But the reason why we don't walk in the authority of royalty is because we're always talking 
down on ourselves. We're always talking about what's not right with this. I'm not tall enough. I'm not smart enough. I can't do that. I don't have the resources. These people don't know me. I'm from the hood. Ain't nobody gonna give me no opportunity. Ain't nobody ever gave me nothing. But if you keep speaking that, you got to speak life over your life. You can't speak death over your life. You can't talk about what's not right. God's made everything right for you, and he's given you the power to speak it into existence. Now watch this. Adam proclaims the names of all these animals. And God said, after he created you, and he said, it's not good for man to be alone. The word of God says there was no anesthesiologist. It wasn't no, he didn't have anybody to prep Adam. The word of God says he law Adam to sleep. And he removed the rib close to the heart of Adam. And he formulated Eve. The reason why God couldn't sleep is because Adam would have lost his mind watching God. <laughs> create woman. He had to put her seat. See, see, guys sometimes when they see a work of art, when they see somebody that's beautiful, they start getting all goo goo eyes and all that. Like, wow, she's bad. So he would have interrupted God's work. God said, Let me put this boy to seat because I'm about to make him a masterpiece. He like how the giraffes have spots. He, he like how the, how, 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 how the birds uh, float in the air. I'm about to make him his own mate. I'm about to make him someone and something that's so powerful when he sees her, it's going to blow his mind. You knew it blew Adam's mind because when God woke him up, when Adam saw Eve, he said, this is fool, man, because she's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And God said, now watch this. I want you to understand something. I'm going to break something down to you. Ain't nothing wrong with sex. The first thing that God said when he married them is go be fruitful and multiply. I ain't getting no mean touch for that. Watch this. Watch this. I want you to see something. Watch this. That's why there ain't enough love going around because we not doing what God told us to do. Amen? Amen. Flesh is, I mean, sex is the one flesh experience. That's why you got a lot of people who out there, you got women that sleep with multiple men. Guess what? Every time you have sex with somebody, you're having a one flesh experience. So if you sleep with Tom, Dick, Harry, Barry, and Larry, what's going on is you got a piece of this one mind, a piece of that one's mind, all these different minds in yours, so you confuse, I don't know if he loves me. You confuse, I don't know if he want to be with me. You confused. I think he got no woman. I ain't never been in his house. You confused because you messing with too many people. You having a one flesh experience with too many people. Sex is powerful. That was the means of connection that God needed Adam and Eve to do. What he needed them to understand, and this is what we don't get. God has created us to be a public relations expert of his excellence. We are public relations experts of his excellence. Watch this. Why do you say that? Watch this. Listen, when it's one person, one person can't create. It takes more than one to create something. That's why the Bible says, when two or more gather in my name, there I am in the midst. It takes two to tango. You know that song? It takes two to tango. It takes two people coming together to make a son or a daughter, twins, triplets, quadruplets. It takes a coming together to make it happen. Now watch this. Eve. Adam was so wise when he when God created Adam. Now watch this. This is this is what you don't understand. The size that we are, I want this to get this is about to blow your mind. So hold on to your seat. Watch this. If they were 15 feet tall, do you know how big their babies were when they came out? Mm -hmm. Think about that. To give you a great visual, God says, the earth is my footstool. So think about it. Shaq feet look like baby shoes to Adam. And he wears 21. 
or a 22. So can you imagine how big Adam's feet were? Now watch this. They're walking the height of some trees. Trees were probably tall, mad tall enough, but if they wanted trees, they could just pull leaves like this. Nice and easy. They could just pluck fruit right there. They had to climb no tree like Pastor Barnes liked to do. They ain't had to do none of that. They could just pluck and partake. Because God created his mind to have the total capacity to understand the hidden things that we can't understand. His mind was so vast. His mind was better than 20 greatest computers. And it moved at an accelerated rate that he understood so many different things. So after him and Eve had did their thing, had gotten busy, and he got her pregnant. This is the production part. Their job was to till the land. They were farmers. Adam was a farmer and Eve was his helpmate. And men, listen to me carefully. If you've never been married or, or, or you're thinking about marriage, don't ever link up with somebody who's not your helpmate. Because if a woman can't meet your help, she is not marriage material. Women, listen to me carefully. If you want a man with a master plan, get a man who understands and knows God. He'll be something special to you because he'll be able to unlock some things that you couldn't figure out by yourself. And when there is this coming together, an explosion happens, an expansion happens, and a production happens, and therefore they brought forth twins. When God blesses you to come together with somebody, he wants to doubly bless you. So he didn't just want them to see how some things, because think about it, animals have uh, babies and litters. So when he impregnated Eve, his spermatozoa split. And they were swimming in two different ways, but both came and penetrated the egg at the same time. That was a miracle in itself. But they brought forth Cain and Abel. Watch this. I want you to see this. Eve, who loved her husband. Eve, who loved to see the power in her husband. Eve, who, who walked like the wind, had more curves than I, 95. Eve, whose voice was sweet as the sounds of clarinet. Eve, who walked and walked like the waves of water. Eve, Adam adored her. He loved her so much. But the word of God says, one day Eve started walking in the midst, in the cool of the garden. Now understand this. God had already told them that they were not supposed to be in the middle. He said that the middle belongs to me. Do not go in the middle. Remember what I told you earlier? God is always in the middle of our situations. They went uh, to a place that they were not supposed to go. Notice this. Eve wasn't with Adam when she walked away from Adam. She was by herself. The word of God says that Eve walked off and when she got into the midst of the garden, maybe she got caught up in the beauty and, and splendor of all of those uh, different leaves and trees and, and, that, and that breeze, that African breeze, that calm, cool, uh, collective African breeze going. Maybe she got caught up plucking on some fruits that she'd never seen before. Maybe she just got caught up just wanting to explore more, just wanting to know more, but we find out that she ends up in the middle of the garden right by the tree of life and right by the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Now watch this. If they're that big, yesterday I seen a guy with a boa constrictor. He had it wrapped around his neck. And I said, this guy is a fool. He's looking for attention. Mm -hmm. The boa constrictor was about this thick around. Mm -hmm. now, 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 watch this. Listen. Back then, the serpent didn't look like those little snakes we see on TV. The rabbits was huge. Mm -hmm. If a boa after sin was that wide. Watch this. You need to see this. I want you to see that panoramic view. The snake was huge. It was up in the tree. It had to be, now watch this. 
Remember how tall I told you they were? Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the ground. The snakes flew then. Mm -hmm. They had wings like a winged dragon, oh, like wow. on Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Huge. Big as this room. Now notice, she knows the snake because Adam named the snake. She know all the snakes. She know them all by name. But watch this. She ends up in the middle of the garden, and she's there. And all of a sudden, a snake starts talking to her. Now she has seen every named snake. She has seen every spot and speckle. But she ain't never seen a snake that speak. Uh, some of y'all fascinated right now. Because y'all been entertaining snakes, and y'all don't even know it. Y'all been in this. Snakes been coming to our life when you can't even see. She's like, oh, yeah. God said I shouldn't be doing that. And you standing in the presence of a snake and don't even know it. And you giving them all your business. Mm -hmm. Now, notice how he sweet talks Eve. Notice how he hypnotizes Eve. The word of God said, <laughs> look at this. Go back to your Bible. It says that a serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, look, watch this. He says, now notice, watch, he using truth because of the Same thing in scripture in Genesis 3. I understand that, but what? Genesis 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, he shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Notice, what he is doing is he's using small talk. And he's also using meaning. Because look, I'm not just going to teach you Bible study. The sermons will correlate with the Bible study. So he's using small talk. Has God said that you can't eat from every tree of the garden? Now watch Eve. Watch she go into all. Now, the devil got her hooked already because he's already went from the first level of communication to the second level of communication. Watch this. He's asking her a question. Have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, watch this, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She gave him the whole history book. That's a lesson for all of us. You know why? Watch this. People don't usually talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. But Eve, even though she is a literal person, she's prophetic of the church. Many people, a woman, Bible, when you look at symbolism, a woman represents the church. What's happening in this day and age is that the church is walking in the middle where God doesn't want them to be. They're in the midst of the garden and the snake is right there and they're like, oh yeah. God said, I ain't supposed to do this, but God said, I, I, I can do this, I can do that, I, I can do this, I can do that, but I can't do this because I'll surely die. And the world and the devil are saying, you shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. For God knows that in the day that you touch and eat thereof, notice this, watch this, look. His voice have captivated. So auditory and visually, she was already, he had, he had both frequencies right there. But kinesthetic, look, watch this, she ain't never touched that fruit before. But he said, God knows that in the day that you touch and you eat for the fruit, ye shall be as gods, and your eyes visual shall be open, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Wow. Yep. Watch this. She hears what he says. Now she's hooked because he's already went down all four levels. Remember what I said? The Eve was already fascinated. She was fascinated by her husband, so he came at her with a well, he came at her with a wisdom and knowledge trance. And I say as a trance because he hypnotized her. She said the snake when 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 God. I know she hip, he hypnotized her because of how she responds to God. Adam quickly passes the buck like most men like to do. They want to put it on somebody else. But Eve calls it how she sees it because God has put within woman this, this, this divine uh, compass called spiritual discernment. That's why anytime you was doing something wrong, your mother was the one who knew what was going on and your pops ain't know what was going on. Your mother knew when you were smoking weed and your pops didn't know because he was clueless because the spiritual discernment placed inside of a woman. That's why 
why when a woman is telling you those Negroes ain't no good, they snakes, you're like, those my boys, those my boys. You don't understand. God is speaking spiritual discernment to the woman to bring you to back to reality, and you're not listening. So watch this. I want to end this up. Watch this. Eve plucks the fruit because 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 he didn't already so he didn't have to, he didn't have to tell her how good the fruit tastes he didn't have to tell her he all he had to do was just frame it just right once you frame your communication just right people just gonna fall in line he hypnotized her because he indirectly got everything he needed out of her he extracted it. He didn't know, he knew that God had relegated him to the middle of the garden. How did the snake get there? <laughs> we're going to talk about that later, but Satan wasn't always Satan, he was Lucifer. When he was kicked out of heaven for causing rebellion and getting the angels to wild out and fight up against God, and, and Mike, when his angels prevailed, and kicked their butt out of heaven, Phil Gold kicked him in his imps. And he, because he's the leader now, and one third of the fallen angels, hell's angels, was rocking with him. So the first thing is, listen, Satan wanted to be like God. Watch this, Satan was mad because God said, let us make man in our image. And Satan was like, bird, son? I want to be like you, son, and you want make a creature that's lower than me? In the image of you, that's just like you? Man, listen. It's going to pop in now. I'm relegated to this area in the middle. All I need is for one of them to show up, and I'm going to put it on them. And the angel said, what do we have to do? What should we do, Satan? What, what, what should we do, King? He's like, shut up, sit back, and watch the master work. Eve gets in the conversation. When she plucks the fruit, and she bites from it, Adam, who was somewhere else, ends up there. Because he noticed that his wife wasn't by his side. So he comes there, when she bit into it, she passed it to Adam. Now notice this, the kingdom was not rendered through the queen. A kingdom cannot be rendered to someone else by the queen. You have to get the king to surrender in order to take over the kingdom. Adam and Eve were rulers over the earth. Adam king, Eve queen. So when she passed the fruit to Adam and he willfully partake, sin entered into the world through Adam. Even though Eve partook in the fruit before Adam, but she did not have the authority and power to relinquish the office of king to relinquish the office of kingdom. So once Adam partook, the word of God says that all of a sudden the glow of glory that covered her breast and her vaginal area disappeared. And the word of God says, just like Satan had told them, your eyes shall open up. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And Adam looked as Anytime when they was having sex, he ain't never seen what a vagina looked like. Never seen it before. He never seen how the breasts looked because it was enshrouded. So when he looked at her, she looked at him and was like, whoa, something ain't right. <laughs> what happened to that glow? And God started calling for them. They Think about this. Two big 15 footers running into a boy. <laughs> Think about that. That means that the trees were huge and the bushes were even huge. Mm -hmm. So I want you to get a full spectrum of how it really went down. So they start putting together leaves. So God was just chilling. He was chilling in his normal spot. He didn't even, he wasn't even, they knew he was coming because you always know when God shows up. Mm -hmm. He don't have to make no big, big, big appearance. So he was waiting, he was, he was waiting for them. He was calling out Adam. He's calling them to give them a chance to come out to him. Then eventually they come out and they got some fig leaves on. And I was like, hey, what's going on? He's like, man, you 
called me, I got scared. They didn't know nothing about fear. Until they sinned against God. All they knew was faith and faithfulness. But because the devil had tricked them into eating this food, now they were frightened. Especially frightened of God because sin can't stand in the presence of God. And because they sinned when they heard him, a chill of fear went through them. That's why they was cold and that's why they sewed together fig leaves. Can you imagine how ridiculous they looked? <laughs> With fig leaves in front of God, like, when I heard you, I was scared. So watch this. Eve is symbolic on how the church has been acting in this present day. Adam and Eve's story is prophetic on how things are going in life. The woman who's the church is starting to walk in the middle and partake of forbidden fruit. But watch this. The king who is Adam is the leadership of the church. And the leadership is following suit behind what the church wants when God has placed Adam in a leadership role that they work together. Not one controlling the other, but working together. So, leadership will always fail if leadership just depends on what the woman said. The woman was the church figuratively. Get it? So that's why the church is suffering now. But watch this. So, so he asked Adam, and Adam said the first thing, because he's he coming to the king. He got to come to the king because the king is head. He was created first. He knew everything. And put me. before she was tempted, they already knew that Satan had fell because God had already told them. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like they didn't know. That's why Satan had to hypnotize her and bewilder her to partake in the fruit. So watch this. He comes out and says, the woman you gave me, the blame game. You gave me to eat and I, I did partake. And he asked the woman, what is this that thou has done? And she said, the serpent of God. Notice she took full responsibility. She said, the serpent beguiled me. In other words, God, I knew what you said. I know what you said for us. I, told, I know you told us not to be here and to look out for him, but the serpent beguiled you. Now watch what God says. God pronounced a sentence. So he says to the woman that now when you have children, you're going to have childbirth. This is going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. Right? So that's why bringing forth children, bringing forth children in pain. But well, watch what he says to the, to, to the serpent and kind of to Adam. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, her seed and your seed. Now watch this, look, I need you to understand this. So he is the mother to all of us, right? Mm -hmm. So God is saying to her, he's saying to the snake that the seed of Eve is going to come forth and bring redemption. Amen? Amen. He's telling the devil, your seed and his seed is going to war. He's saying it's going to be a, it's a great controversy now. Because the war you started in heaven, now you're unleashed on earth. And because this is going on, what's going to happen is the woman's going to bring forth a son and we know him as Jesus. Amen? Amen. And he's going to crush your head and you're going to strike his head. If a snake strikes your heel, it clips you, but it doesn't kill you. What he was telling the devil is, you thought you had a fight in heaven? You can have a whole other fight here on earth because now, you're not just trying to war on the heavens. You're trying to take over complete kingdom. You don't just want down here. You want up there and down there. So now I'm going to really set it off and shut you down. From Genesis to Revelation, the devil is always 
busy. A lot of times people say, oh, it's not him. Get out of here. He's always been at it. He's been at it with God, and of course he's at it with you because you're made in his very image. He hates you because you're created in God's image. You have the authority that he wanted to be like the Most High. And you can bring forth children. He hates that. So, all between Genesis and Revelation, we have never been a book of generation. I mean, Revelation. From Genesis to Revelation, a great controversy is going on. But you have to be aware of it so you can stand up against it. That's why Peter says in 1 Peter 5 8, be so and be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, is as a born lion seeking whom he may devour. This ain't no game. He playing for keeps, he's a predator. But guess what? Look at your neighbor and say, guess what? God created me to be a Schwarzenegger. That's <laughs> God created me to be a Schwarzenegger. And I got your number, fool. <laughs> I got your number, fool. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, beloved, understand this. That the great controversy is going on every day in every way. That's why Paul says in Ephesians 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, against the rulers of darkness and principalities and powers. And so the reason why he's saying that is notice this. I want you to this and I'm going to close with this. When it says, when you think of heaven, sometimes people think heaven is one place, but there's three heavens. There's aspect, that does. tongue tied, sorry. <laughs> There's at atmospheric heaven, the atmosphere, right? Then the second heaven is the starry heaven. See, the at like like the atmosphere is over by the clouds and all. Spiritual wickedness in high places, right? The third heaven is where God resides. Amen. Amen. So the devil can't come into the third heaven without permission. Got that? But he can walk in the atmosphere and he can walk in the starry heavens. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Bible says spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why David says the Lord is my high tower. See, the devil thinks I'm on ground level, but God is my high tower. So he puts me up there so I can see all y'all little knuckleheads high in the clouds. <laughs> I see y'all a mile away. That's why David says the Lord is my high tower in Psalms 18. Every head is bowed, every eye is open. Lord, we understand your truth. We thank you for revealing it to us in ways in which we may never have heard before. The Lord continues to give us a greater understanding so that we know who the truth is. And we understand that there's a great controversy going on. There's a war going on outside. No man or woman is safe. So, Lord, help us to be prepared. Because Satan thought it was over in the garden. And God said, now, you said, I'm taking it to a whole other level. And Jesus became our second Adam. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ, who gives us the power to have new life who gives us the authority to do great and amazing things. So Lord, help us to remember that from Genesis to Revelation, the devil will always be running and gunning for us. But Lord, as long as we trust you and we fight and work with you, he can't win. He can't win. He's a defeated Lord. So Lord, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your glory. In the sins of God's name. Amen. Amen.
Tell the world 